This is Damon, the Global Gardener in Washington, Seattle, Washington at the Beacon Food Forest in the third video in the series. Is that on my face or the camera? That's the camera. Because uh, I'm enjoying these this food forest so much that I'm just like munching on things. So I thought I might have had something on my face, but here they got mulch. And we went and it's, it's certainly more than seven acres now. I don't know if they're designating, no, actually one, Mm, they're about half planted. Maybe the whole seven acres is the whole area. But I was here five years ago, and they and they were just kind of getting going. Um, but everything that has matured quite a bit, all the fruit trees and things. So that's a good strategy to really fertilize one area when you're when you're expanding into a new garden is to really uh, fertilize and get it going right, and then then you have a lot to build on because now because it was just a a field. Let's see if you can see just just like grass and stuff, but but now they have all this life and diversity, and that starts by building up the soil in various places. Um, and I guess there was some. I'm not sure where all this concrete came from, but that's a good use of concrete instead of sending it like to the landfill or away is to make nice areas so that it's more level and, and easy to walk on and easy to garden in. So beautiful lush tomatoes squash there's a there's potatoes in here um, I see a strawberry tree right there arbutus they got we we ate the raspberry flowers on a different raspberry patch uh, raspberry radish patch in the last uh, last video there's there's so many uh, raspberries around here that I got seeds in my teeth from them and they're on my mind, but the radish definitely spice balance the sweet flavors. Um, the cilantro is bolting already. There are some slow varieties, slow bolting varieties of cilantro to check out because uh, otherwise those should go in the shade to uh, temper them against the heat because they'll bolt real quick when, in full sun and heat in the, in the, in the hot season. It's the end of June here in 2020. And so here's some interesting, uh, it looks like they're going to fill these potato uh, those, that's just cardboard wrapped up on there. Circles of cardboard. Uh, it's like a thicker cardboard and a couple layers of it. And it will uh, get filled with compost. We're going closer. Compost. So the more the potatoes grow, the more compost goes in. And then you just peel away the cardboard that decomposes anyway and then you have potatoes it's better than tires people use car tires but ooh, toxic so food bank please do not pick so this is designated for the food bank this is the food growing here and it's actually surrounded by you can see the sticks they're going to have a lot of beans growing up Ah, oh, they have some planted here already with strings it's just it's just sticks of bamboo there is a variety of bamboo that grows in Washington and the Pacific Northwest uh, and uh, actually no it was Colorado I've been in Colorado a lot lately and that's where people were asking where do they get it um, beans strings bamboo and the recycled concrete edging of the pathways and as part of the architecture the design of this place it's pretty great uh, we've found a ladybug this is my lovely assistant Zoe and her friend, the ladybug. Lots of pollinators, lots of uh, life in here. Just beyond just the plants, is uh, they they make a real focus and effort to bring in uh, all kinds of other life and, and to support them in helping garden, helping fertilization, helping the entire area. So everything but bears, maybe. Uh, Here's a curly willow in the garden. Curly willow. Willow can be used for... Willow takes a lot of water. It'll suck up a lot of water. Uh, but it can be used for uh, uh, aspirin. I don't know if you know about that. But uh, you can look up where aspirin comes from. And also the bark, because it sprouts so readily, that willow, like crushed up, can... can and tomatoes, too, can uh, stimulate root growth. So if you're trying to root various plants, that's a good, like rooting hormone.
Here's some mint if we rub the leaf. Ah, oh, and smell your fingers, we'll get a treat. Ah, uh, these potatoes are really healthy. They must have brought in a lot of manure and compost. And then they, on the edge is a great place to plant the squash because it will just run off into the weeds. You don't need to cover the, the nice soil with that. Here's a, a bear patch. This is what it was like before. Speaking of bears, uh, not that bears go there, but that's, I know it's a furry area without bears, but it's bear. Um, here's the, the top because, because of all the, the runner beans are gonna cover this and shade the lettuce. We were talking about the cilantro bolting when it's in the full sun and heat. Uh, lettuce will also bolt in, in full sun and heat. Uh, it'll grow quickly, but unless you pick it all right away, uh, now it'll get shaded by the beans, and the beans also are leguminous, so they're going to feed the soil. And so three sisters, I got corn and beans and squash in this patch. Those, those are, uh, they, 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 all, they all feed each other and, and help each other to grow. It's a Native American thing is what they say about that. And here's another Lonicera honeysuckle. You can pick the leaves off and suckle the honey sweetness out of the, the at ends of the flowers. Here's just some uh, interesting architectural design piece of just sticks that are made into a fence. They're not even tied together, they're just shoved into the ground. And they're, they're, it's the, the, the sticks that they have like branching, and so they're just wedged into each other. And that's how they hold each other up. And that all folds back into the garden as compost to build the soil. Anything carbonaceous like that. Here's a dicentra, is a bleeding heart. Bleeding heart, if you've never seen bleeding hearts. They have these flowers that are bleeding hearts. Aww. There's already peas growing on the peas. And so some of these are just sticks and some are bamboo. And I'm trying to see if the bamboo needs to be tied together. I imagine once the beans start growing up the trellising that they will bind it together and hold it together. Oh my goodness. What do you see down there? Not just squash blossoms, but full on uh, zucchini. Oh, and the smell of zucchini is amazing. Just even touching the leaf gave off a wonderful scent. Like. Uh, Tomatoes, tomato plants have a really wonderful scent, I find. There's a few other people out here in the afternoon in the late June 2020. Uh, that's interesting, there's some wild sort of Austrian peas and, and a bramble of blackberries down there. And it's always good to have other flowers. Cosmos, I don't know that they're particularly like edible or for uh, much other than color and bringing in more pollinators. Uh, but here's, looks like maybe, is that cassava or taro or manioc or one of the types of uh, sort of tropical roots because anywhere that gets hot, that doesn't freeze in the summer and, and gets warm enough, you can grow these sort of tropical things. And uh, so I guess we'll go to the, to the last part of the garden and wrap up video three. Certainly tune in to other videos of other places around the world and subscribe to this amazing channel of glorious garden mint. Garden mint. Garden mint. Here's a here's um, horsetail. Just uh, that's what it does. It, it's very weedy. Uh, it's best in containers. It loves water. Uh, I'm talking about this horsetail, Equisetum. Cardoon is the one that looks like it has little artichoke. Ow, those are pokey artichokey things, but but you actually eat the stems of the eat the stems of the leaves. You like peel off the outside, um, so they're not as delectable as like artichoke hearts, but but they are pretty darn good. Here's a looks like a sambucus, little miniature uh, baby. Uh, um, uh, Elderberry. Oh, and there's people in this garden. Wow, look at these peas. Those are very pretty. Very pretty. And uh, nasturtium, also edible flowers, very spicy and delicious. Hollyhocks, 
Don't know about the edibility of those. That's one to inspect. Uh, there's some, uh, I don't know if these are, where these are actually native to, but the evening primrose has some medicinal qualities, I think particularly for women. And the mint and horsetail going wild there. And uh, we talked about Luther Burbank, I think, in the first video. And this is the Shasta Daisy, one of his beloved creations, where he uh, was inspired by a certain daisy and just encouraged it and encouraged it to be bigger and whiter and uh, enjoyable that way. Here's rotting wood nurses the forest. Uh, you've heard about hugel culture, this is like planting logs and then having that be a major carbon sink and source that breaks down and over time becomes super fertilizer that supercharges anything you're planting on it. They're calling the logs nurse logs because they provide food and shelter to bugs and fungi. They also retain water during dry months. Well there you go, there's a way to store water in drier areas although they may not have a lot of trees to begin with they're big logs um, if you can get a log down deep it'll soak up water and and keep things sort of like a organic drip system that uh, gives off water and also uh, improves the soil tremendously beetles fungus rotting wood makes airspace below ground for worms and other soil life grubs pill bugs well, that's exciting. All right, so now we're at the top rung of the. Looks like they even got more hill to to get to get going. There's some potting tables and barrels and compost bins with a lid on it so it doesn't get too wet. Here's a crazy like star-shaped compost bin. I'm assuming you can like lift up each petal. Oh, that is really cool. That's probably the coolest compost bin I've ever seen in a, in a fractal design. Oh boy, and there's just a bunch of amazing herbs in here. This garden just goes on and on. This is uh, one of my favorite plants ever, the pineapple sage. Ah, uh, rub the leaves and get a treat. Can you smell your fingers? Here comes the family, so I'm going to go the other way because it's still we're still in COVID times here. Uh, here's some sweet woodruff growing in full sun. I usually try to put it in a little more shade. Looks like it's flowering a lot because things flower more and the more sun you can get them. Here's some lavender. There's the borage with the flowers that taste like cucumbers. Here's a fig tree. I saw another fig tree down below. Look at that raspberry patch. Have you ever seen anything so abundantly healthy? Super tall. Those are the, the golden raspberries that I was raving about in the first video. There's some oregano. Oh, they got ashwagandha in here. And that must be like a medicinal herb garden right there because they're right near the, whoa. What are these? Is that like Logan berries or something? That is loaded berries, whatever that is. I don't see any, uh, they're all pink. They're not, none of them are ripe yet. Or else somebody came by and ate one. There's a hidden one. No, they're all pretty hard still. They're more riper when they're when they're darker colored typically, unless they're like a white berry. Like this is a mulberry, and if you've ever seen white mulberries, thems are delicious. Uh, here's the whole classroom. I think this section is about bees. They have an outdoor kitchen here with a sink, maybe for processing, um, who knows, whatever they want really. Community emergency hub. What's good for one is good for all. Beacon Food Forest. Beaconfoodforest.org. Facebook.com slash Beacon Food Forest. I don't know if I should probably highlight that more. There's where you get your deets. 
And then they got the permaculture standards, care for the earth, care for the people, fair share for all, return of the surplus. And there is a lot of surplus here. Oh look, they got kind of like a, always have some for others. This is like the service window for the, the kitchen back there. What a great space. What a great public benefit. The harvest map. That's the whole place. They don't say what the total acreage is. I should get my hey ah hee hee ah beacon food forest. All right, so we're oh here we go. Welcome to Beacon Food Forest. This is Damon, the global gardener in wonderful random gardens around the world, whether they be botanic gardens or food forests. I would prefer food forests. However, there doesn't seem to be enough of them yet in the world, and that's why I have this channel, is to inspire much more activity. And such as this. Why do we need food forests in the city? Which I would think would be obvious, but they've actually stated it out. Uh, because of uh, butterfly migrations, uh, to help with diversity and resistance and resilience. And uh, they're talking about uh, beetles and uh, sheltering of birds. And so there you have it. The Beacon Food Forest. Come visit. Take a helicopter ride here. Here's, can you see the helicopter? There it goes. Alright, getting a little loopy here at the end of the video. And so, yeah, be sure to get on my channel. And I will get on your channel and we will channel wonderful gardens together. There's some California poppies. I'm native to California. And calendula, a extraordinary weed that every garden needs along with all the vetch and clover and uh, those are low growing but, but in permaculture there are multiple layers and you can grow every layer a different kind, many different kinds of uh, legumes that feed the entire garden. So that's what we have for you. There's even a uh, fire pit for late night talks and enjoying food because people are having so much fun they want to keep hanging out together. Collaboration and community and probably music and all the things that make humans humans. And I am Damon the Global Gardener and I will see you in the next video uh, after I talk about this is really cute little rain gutter collection into some barrels. So this is just a simple design, probably just to exhibit that you can catch water. There's just a chain so it doesn't splash. You don't actually need uh, all the PVC and everything into a barrel. And the chain just goes into, so it's just a one gallon pot sitting in there. Uh, and these don't have much of an outflow. That one just has a spigot on it and, and an and a, and a appliance hose, washing machine hose, so you can connect it to probably just any irrigation system. Uh, keep, thing, keep thinking I run out of things to, to say, but then I keep seeing there's like giant figs down here. Well, giant figs. Can you see those fruits? And the, is that collards, giant collard leaves, and another more of the more of the sticks that they just jam in the ground and cross over each other and some of the they don't even tie them together they just seem to stay up on their own and the vines hold them up and any any uh, sort of places where you can put notches or crotches of branches together they're gonna hold each other up 
um, cleavers. It's a weed, but and really invasive, but uh, has some medicinal properties. And yarrow. Um, always have yarrow. It's Achillea millefolia, wonderful plant. Ah, here's some. Here's some. Luther Burbank's uh, Shasta daisies. This is even a, a somebody took off of his with the, with this fuzzy variety of Shasta daisy. That's really cute. So we're back in the herb garden with rosemary and pomegranates and mugwort and what else? Uh, just everything. You can really just plant everything and have everything in an abundant garden such as this, even in the public. So this is Damon the Global Gardener signing off. See you in the next video.